Hey everyone, this is Olarele Benishola, also known as Area Chicha. You are listening to Purple Teens Podcast, the show that talks about teenagers in concerning education, entrepreneurship, and social issues that affect the lives of teenagers. In today's episode, it's promised to be an interesting one, which we are going to be talking about beyond the ashes. We are relating that to how Young teenagers comes out from the local areas, also known as ghetto, in quotes, and how they are able to survive in today's environment. We are going to be discussing this particular topic with Miss Abida Alabi. She will be joining us after this short break. Hello, everyone. My name is Abida Alabi. And a graduate of Kora State University, Maliti, Nigeria. I'm a girl child advocate. I am a big lover of STEM and I'm trying as much as possible to accelerate my career in technology, which is why I'm studying electrical and computer engineering right now. Um, I am a student by day and um, a, a programmer as well as a designer by night. I involve myself in, in, a lot of, in a lot of things and that's because I have a passion to see myself grow, to see myself move from where I am to where I need to be in the next 10 years. Um, what else, what else, what else you need to know about me? I, I am a writer too, I am a lot of things, I'm a lot of things actually, whatever the situation calls for, I, I just dive into it and I am into a lot of things because but whatever piques my interest, I, I like to try my hands on it. So I might not be a master of everything, but at least I have a, I have a, I have a bit of knowledge of literally everything. My mind, um, my mind chose interesting. Yeah. Miss Abida, welcome to our a special edition, a special episode on properties. Welcome on the hot seats you have a special guest for us today so i'll be throwing you some questions one on one with you you're going to be answering our question you are our guest on the hot seat what is your story what makes you stand out as you are as miss abida that you are presently what is the story behind your current success okay when it comes to the story behind my my upcoming success i can't say i can't say my success right now because i'm still struggling to get to where i want to be i'm not where i envision myself to be right now so when it comes to the story behind my upcoming success i i'd say there are um a lot of stories around there there have been contributions from different people from my parents to mentors to teachers to a lot of um to organizations to a lot of things but one major thing behind all the stories is the fact that um you know you can't you can there's this thing that says you can take it us to the um river but you can't force us to drink or less the host or less the us is thirsty so i am thirsty for knowledge i have always been thirsty for um for an upgrade in myself in my personal skills in my personal development in like literally everything that concerns me so um the fact that i have always been eager to learn i've always been on the front row when it comes to volunteering when it comes to participating in activities that would help me become one of the very best version of myself um i am always eager to do stuff like that so the the major push behind this various stories that are contributing that have been contributing and are, that are still contributing to my upcoming success story is the fact that i have the determination to become a successful person i have to go um, i have the i have the eagerness i have the passion i have to drive and whenever i feel down whenever i don't whenever i just want to give up i remember that i have not gotten to where i need to be yet so and a lot of people are rooting for me i can't let their contributions to 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 go to waste so i just have to keep pushing what is an insult that you have received from people and you are proud of it okay an insult that i have received from people is um let's say the fact that whenever i'm usually with my friends 
I I act should I say should I say I act a little bit like a child. I act childish sometimes, most times actually, whenever I'm with my friends and whenever I'm with people that I'm comfortable around and then they'd be like have you that you don't even have sense stuff like that. But I'm actually proud of it because that way I they don't feel intimidated by by my abilities and the things that I can do. I feel like okay, they can actually relate more to me. They can actually relate more with me and they can actually be more free with me. When because um I noticed whenever whenever I have a friend that um that isn't that comfortable around me and then this person knows my abilities and the things that I can do. You know, they usually have this they usually have this should I say this um this I don't know what to call it, but they don't want to offend me. They don't want to do anything that would require me getting annoyed at them and stuff like that. I don't. I don't feel comfortable doing. I don't feel comfortable having um such a relationship with someone because you. I. I can't. I can't. I can't be free with you. If you can't be free with me, and for you to be free with me, you have to forget the fact that okay, this person is so so so. This person knows how to do this. I am just. I'm just. I'm just. Um. I'm just. I'm just. You know what? Teenager like you. So an insult I have received from most people is that I act childish. I don't act like I have sense. When in reality, it is the other way around, and I'm proud of that because that way they can actually relate more with me, can tell me the truth rather than um, run and tell me the things that they feel I need to hear, and they can just see me as a normal teenager. What do people misunderstand about you most? Okay, what people misunderstand about me most? Um, should I say a lot of times I've had situations where someone I'm I'm really good friends with comes up to me and tells me that okay Abida, would you believe I thought you were you were a small initially I thought you were someone I couldn't approach for <laughs> so yeah people usually feel I'm an unapproachable person maybe I don't know if I have the face or if I have to look but someone else told me it's easy to make friends with me but a higher percentage of people say they were actually afraid of talking to me. I don't know if it's because of the way I look, um, perhaps the expressions I give and all. But when people eventually get to know me, you realize that I'm just I'm just a normal person. I like to I like to look for trouble. I'm just like your normal typical teenage girl. So before people get to know me, they actually they, they usually feel I'm an unapproachable person. But when they eventually approach me and they realize okay, this girl doesn't bite at all. So yeah. What is your favorite childhood memory? Um, I do have a lot of favorite childhood memories. I don't even know what to pick from. I don't know what to pick from because I've had a lot of memories in my family, my siblings, my parents, my cousins and all. But I think one of my favorite memories was um, one where I I would sit I would sit um, I would sit in the living room with my family and then we just watch especially my I, I I don't have a biological sister. I have just brothers. So um, where me and my brothers and my dad would sit in the living room and then we'd watch um, Power Rangers. Power Rangers really made my <laughs> really made my childhood. So one of my memories was you know I I always looked forward to it whenever I my siblings and my dad would always sit down in the living room. I know we just connect. It was a way to connect as a family, and I really 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 cherished. Um, I'm in worry. What is your biggest failure and what was the lesson that you learned from it? Okay, failure. Okay, um, I haven't had any major failure like that, like that. But I've had a lot of, you know, um, failed decisions, um, um, should I say mistakes, I've made a lot, a lot of mistakes. I've had a lot of failures in my life, but not, no, 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 um, should I say no major, no major failure per se. But and, um, one thing I've learned from this little failures here and there is the fact that, um, that I can't always, I can't always win. I can't always get it right. So whenever I, I, I have any of those failures, I, I analyze it and look at what I did wrong, where I made a mistake, where I failed. What, um, you know, I, 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 I look at what I could have done better, so that in case of next time. So it's just like I, I gain experience from all those failures. So one thing I have learned from these videos is the fact that I have gained experiences from them. I don't just feel and just you know just move on to the next. So that I analyze and you know I um mentally sit myself down and you know, Abida, what did you do wrong? 
what went wrong, what happened. So that way, when I excited for a situation like that, because I've seen a lot of other similar situations where I've been able to avoid such failures because I was able to analyze what I did wrong in the past. So, um, so whenever I'm faced with so, such um, a similar, with such similar situations, I know what to do. Yeah. What is the biggest challenge they are facing right now in your field, right now in your school? Well, I can't say I am facing any challenge right now when it comes to academics. Um, I am coping with pretty much everything, and I think that's because I'm that's because I'm still in my first year, and I've been told a lot of times that first year, um, our first year curriculum is pretty much basic and like that of a secondary school. So I don't really have any challenge I'm facing right now. I can't say maybe when I get to 200 level and, and stuff, but right now I don't have any academic challenge. I'm currently battling with. Who has been your most important professional mentor? Okay, when it comes to mentors, um, all my mentors are professionals across the fields that I have shown interest in. Um, they are all important and I can't really say, okay, this person is more important than the other because like I said, they are all professionals and all the skills, all these fields are also really, really, really important to me. So I can't really say, okay, um, this particular person is more important. They all have their importance because um, they all have their various, they all have their various, um, various, should I say, various specialties and um, yeah. What books, at least three books, Will you recommend to my audience to list to read in order to boost their self personality? Books and personal development they don't they don't mix well with me with me, me personally. I I I can't I don't should I say I'm not the type of person to sit down in front of a book and you know start to read through and flip through just to develop myself personally it doesn't it doesn't flow with me i don't know why so i prefer to watch videos than to sit down and read books so i can't really recommend any book for anyone to read based on personal development but what i can do is i can recommend videos for you to watch especially um ted talk ted um ted talk videos they have helped me a lot so the if there's any if there's any video channel if there's any video resource that, that i'd recommend from for you it would be TED Talk um, videos. There are lots of TED Talk videos I can watch. I would help you um, develop yourself personally. Yeah. What is your favorite productivity hack? Okay, productivity hack. Um, a particular productivity hack that works for me is um, having that conversation with someone. For example, I might be working on a project and I'm down, like, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to do, I don't know what, um, I don't know the next step to take, I just discuss it with someone. The person might not be of help, but along the line, while we are conversing, I mean, I know just sharing ideas, you know, um, 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 dissecting those ideas I have down and things like that. One way or the other, my, 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 should I say my creative block, my productivity block, that I, uh, my productivity block gets cleared. I don't know how it happens, but, you know, it could be just like, so it could, um, for example, um, whenever I have a story that I want to write and I am stuck, you know, I am having a writer's block, I just discuss it with one or two people, or, uh, in particular, I usually discuss it with my mom, and, you know, we share ideas, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that happens, but I don't have that conversation. I I literally know what to do next. I don't know how it happens. I just you know I just get this. Even the person I'm conversing with might not be the one to give me the idea, but the fact that, that I am sharing it with you, my that my my brain too is working. Um, it's, I don't know. I don't know how it happens. Like I said, but I just automatically have new ideas whenever I'm discussing it with someone. Whatever I have a I have a problem. I have an issue that I am that I'm facing in the project, and I you know just find someone to just discuss it with someone that understands, not not just anybody. To anyone listening to this someone that understands might not the person might not be able to to give you um, an idea but someone that has sense <laughs> someone that that wouldn't take you for granted someone that wouldn't feel like you're joking someone that would take you seriously yeah 
find someone that will take you seriously then discuss share your idea with the person let the person ask you ask you questions or just just see the person now and tell the person about this because one way or the other you you yourself would have questions and then okay i have this question for myself so how do i answer and um, that is um, a major productivity act that i use and i also always helped me what advice will you give to the young ones that are coming after you now okay the advice i'd give to the young ones coming after me is that you should never ever 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 stand back um you asked the question earlier what makes me stand out and i said um the fact that i've always been determined you would whenever you need someone to participate in activities in class you would find me as one of the top people that i always stay because i i i don't want to stand back so you should you shouldn't stand back you should you should be on the front row i'm not saying you should be a very bad bear and stuff like that i'm not saying you should be you should, you should be too ambitious but you should you shouldn't you shouldn't hold yourself back you shouldn't be shy you shouldn't you shouldn't hesitate when you know that okay i am perfectly capable of doing something like this you shouldn't um think of what other people will say when it comes to things that you really love to do so whatever it is you whatever it is you want to do whatever step you want to take don't stand back don't think of what other people will say um you shouldn't because they wouldn't be there when when people wouldn't want to listen to you right now they wouldn't want to listen to your visions and goals but when you eventually get there they would start to seek your they will start to seek you and you know, start asking you questions that's just it so don't stand back right now people might not really they might not really they might not really value your opinions but when you get to where you are going to they will come to you and they might eventually start to pay you for you to tell them your opinions yes yeah so Thank you very much, Ms. Abida, for coming and answering our questions on today's episode on properties. It's our pleasure to answer our question and we wish to see you more of you on this show once again. Thank you very much. I'd like to say a really big thank you for having me on the show. It was a really awesome experience and I hope to see more teenagers like me being no steady here. Thank you very much. And to our attentive and beautiful listeners out there, I hope you enjoy today's episode on Purple Things Beyond the Ashes. I hope you can connect yourself to the root of where you come from. It doesn't really matter where you belong, you can be successful. On the next episode of our next show, which is Pain or Glory. Wow, look at the title, very enticing and you know, you will be anxious. I know Pain or Glory will be anxious. What has Pain or Glory got to do with our next episode stay tuned as usual and you know my name still remains Ola Ali Benishala, also known as Era Chicha. Stay, stay blessed and stay tuned on more exciting topics coming up on properties this show is brought to you by Era Chicha production and we wish to hear from you questions and inquiry next time stay blessed